So after watching this video, students will be able to explain the relationship between energy and light. You'll be able to calculate energy associated with uh, light using the E equals H times nu equation. Okay, so Planck's constant in your frequency. And you'll be able to calculate the mass associated with photons of light. So at the time of its uh, suggestion, the wave model of light uh, was incapable of explaining all light behaviors. Um, so additional work had to be done uh, in this area of study. Um, the emission of light from hot objects, otherwise known as black body radiation, this is one thing that we'll be covering in this lecture, and the emission of electrons from metal surfaces um, on which a light has been shined, um, this is known as the photoelectric effect, and we're going to look at both of these um, in this lecture. So black body um, radiation uh, basically refers to uh, the difference between a cool object and its appearance versus its appearance after um, or as it's being heated. Um, so basically solids, when they're heated, um, they usually glow some um, color type. So you know, you've heard of something called you know, a red hot coal or a red hot stove. Um, you may might have also heard of you know white hot light. Um, so you know these things come from heating a stove or maybe like a bright light bulb or things of that sort. Now, um, the object's color um, or the wavelength distribution, what we are experiencing in terms of your visual aid, that reddish color or that you know that whitish bright light, um, those. Uh, wavelength distributions are directly cut connected to the temperature of the objects and because of this observation that you know red hot objects are cooler than white hot objects um, a scientist named Max Planck um, basically said or theorized um, that the energy that's released from these objects um, was occurring in basically specific amounts or chunks these these discrete um, specific quantities and he called these amounts these these uh, emissions or absorptions he called them quantum and a quantum um, is a fixed amount um, of energy that can be emitted or absorbed as electromagnetic um, radiation and what he said was that um, atoms or you know matter um, can absorb and release energy only in whole multiples of um, these quantum so basically um, you can have one quanta, two quanta, three quanta, etc. So um, the relationship between energy and frequency um, are, is represented by this equation here, um, which basically expresses energy um, with respect to a constant known as Planck's constant, which you can see right here, and um, frequency. So the energy of the light being absorbed or released by um, the atom or by the uh, matter uh, is directly proportional to uh, the frequency of that light. Um, so this equation uh, comes into connects our light um, and the um, the actual waves with an actual energy value. So all light therefore has energy. Um, and this led to other um, experimentation and other discoveries, as we'll talk about here in a second. But before we do that, let's go ahead and let's uh, look at a few of the details. Um, remember, energy here for this equation, um, it's calculated in joules. Why? Because Planck's constant, um, as seen below, is in joules. Um, remember that uh, frequency here, it's in hertz. Remember, that can be looked at as um, inverse seconds as well. Um, so when you're going and doing a dimensional analysis or a unit analysis on your problem, um, all of your units uh, should cancel out. Um, don't be intimidated by the Hertz uh, unit. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's look at some calculation utilizing this equation. So what they've told us here is that copper one chloride, when it's heated up um, in a firework, releases or emits a blue light that has a wavelength of 450 nanometers. And they want us to calculate the energy associated with that specific wavelength of light. Okay, so we know we're going to be using the energy equation that we've discussed. Um, and since we have been provided um, wavelength, we also know that we're going to be using the C equals lambda times nu equation. Okay, so we're going to need to start with this equation 
um, in order to then plug in our uh, frequency um, to this one. Okay, so what we're first going to do is take care of our frequency. So frequency is going to equal C over lambda. Okay, we know that our C is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second because that's our constant. And we also need our wavelength. However, our wavelength here is in nanometers. Okay, and as we know, our units must match. Okay, so I'm going to take this 4.50 times 10 to the second. Okay, um, that's in nanometers. And I'm going to convert that into uh, meters. So remember, there's 10 to the negative 9 meters for every one nanometer. Okay, so nanometers and nanometers are going to cancel. Um, and so this should give us 4.50 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. And that can subsequently be plugged into uh, the bottom half of this equation over here. Okay, um, and when we go ahead and plug this into our calculators, we're going to get 6.666 repeating times 10 to the 14th. Okay, units wise, our meters and our meters are going to cancel. We're going to end up with inverse seconds. Okay, um, so then we're going to take this number, our frequency number, and we're going to plug it into our equation. Okay, so remember our h is a constant. Okay, it's Planck's constant, 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. Okay, so that's our h. All right, and then we are going to plug in our frequency that we just calculated. So um, and go ahead and plug that in there okay, with our inverse seconds, which could also be written as hertz. And we're going to multiply these together. And that's going to give us 4.42 times 10 to the negative 19th. Okay, units wise, seconds and seconds cancel, joules is what's left. Okay, and this is my energy value associated with the quanta that is released when that copper chloride in the firework is heated. So this goes and brings us to the photoelectric effect. Um, and basically what the photoelectric effect is, is a situation in which we have a clean metal surface and light is shined onto that surface. Okay, and what was being observed is that uh, sometimes electrons would be eject ejected off of the surface of that metal. Um, and basically with some additional work uh, from Einstein, he was able to determine that there was a minimum frequency that was required in order to make that happen. And this was specific to individual metals, okay? So potassium would require a different frequency um, in order to get the electrons to be ejected versus say cesium or something of that sort. So to explain this observation, uh, what Einstein assumed is that the energy that was striking the metal surface, uh, surface was actually behaving as basically like energy packets or a particle of energy. And and he called these particles of energy photons. Now, the idea here is that these photons have energy. And if those photons have energy, uh, based off of Max Planck's work, okay, um, energy is related to his constant as well as frequency, which can then be expanded, of course, and be related to wavelength. Now, the reason why uh, Einstein believed that these were being these electrons were being ejected is because the energy that was being provided um, to the surface of the metal was enough to excite those electrons um, away from the nucleus. So um, he did some additional work. Einstein basically spent some more time. Of course, he was working on his theory of relativity. Um, and basically, he combined uh, his observations uh, with the photoelectric effect and the corresponding equation. And of course, uh, his theory of relativity, and that brought him to this equation that involves mass. Okay, so basically what we have here is we have mass being equal to Planck's constant um, divided by wavelength and, of course, our constant for the speed of light. Okay, so basically from the observations he made and basically some extrapolation, he established this equation and basically establish that apparently photons have mass. And if photons are light, um, then apparently light has mass. Um, and there's going to be more to come and discuss on this, but for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it at that.
So we have a problem here that's asking us to calculate the mass of a photon of light. Now this photon of light has a wavelength of 7.8 times 10 to the 8th meters. Okay, so we have a wavelength that's been provided, 10 to the 8th meters. Okay, and we know that we want to solve for mass. Okay, so we know that mass and um, wavelength are related by this equation and that we saw earlier. Okay, and we know that h is a constant. Okay, so h is our 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. Okay, and we know that our c is the speed of light, okay, which is as follows, meters per second. Okay, and our wavelength here, which is already in meters, is going to be 7.8 times 10 to the 8th meters. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug that into our calculator. And that gives us, uh, let's see, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 51st. Okay, and units wise, if we go ahead and do a unit evaluation, we're going to end up with joules second squared per meter squared. Okay, and basically I got that by doing the following. Okay, so we have our joules times seconds on the top. On the bottom, we have meters per second, so we'll do the reciprocal of that. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with our meters here. Okay, if we go ahead and multiply that out, um, we're going to end up with the following units. Okay, now obviously, guys, this is not a mass unit, and we're supposedly solving for mass. Okay, so obviously there needs to be some conversion factor that we uh, should know. Okay, and that conversion factor is... One joule is equal to a kilogram times meter squared per second squared. Okay, so you guys are going to want to memorize this. Okay, and we're going to utilize that to help us make our conversion. Okay, so if one joule is equal to this right here, we can go ahead and plug that in. So kilograms meter squared over second squared times second squared over meter squared. Okay, obviously meters squared and meter squared cancel, second squares and second squared cancel, kilograms is what's left. Okay, so 2.8 times 10 to the negative 51st kilograms is the mass associated with this photon of light.